Hey friends, welcome back to Faith Foster Fire Life. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Today I am heading out to bring Daniel, our youngest, to a visit with his birth mom. So I thought I would take the time while I'm in my car to answer a question about visitation and foster care. So stick around, give this video a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love it if you joined us. And feel free to share our videos with anyone who you think it might be of value to. So we'll do Okay, you can see guys that I am sitting in a parking lot on a cloudy day and I have found myself in this situation many times over the last 11 years when I am waiting for a visit to happen. A lot of times our visits are not close to our house, which I actually like because it protects our privacy, you know, our identity a little bit about where we live. So I don't mind if I have to drive out of town for a visit and wait around for a little um, because it, it does give me that peace of mind that maybe um, will protect where we live a little bit better. So here I am again, sitting in a parking lot, waiting for a visit to happen and to be over. Um, usually I will be prepared with, um, I'll, if I have Joseph with me, we'll do some school in the car, or um, I will bring my Bible study with me and get that done, or I'll listen to a podcast, or I'll just get an errand done. But today I thought, you know what, I only have about 30 more minutes before I have to go back and pick him up. So um, we get a couple of questions all the time about what visitation looks like. I thought I would try to answer questions this morning while I have this little window of time. So today we have a visit happening. I'll give you guys a little bit of background. Visits happen um, consistently throughout a child's placement in foster care. And of course, that is very vital for the child to maintain a relationship with their birth family. So whoever the child was living with when they were removed, so whether that's mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandparents, whoever it was, the state will continue to provide visits with that person while the child is in care. And a lot of times people wonder, um, you know, is that safe? So what happens is it's a case by case situation. All visits are going to be supervised, so the child will never be left alone with the person they were removed from um, at, at any time. Who supervises the visit does change, so I thought I would clear up some of those things because a lot of people imagine that um, it's me, like I'm supervising the visits or I just go meet them at their home and bring the child to their home and they visit for a while or something like that. And that's not what happens really ever. So typically what happens is a caseworker sets up a visit and it's usually once a week for one hour. That's how they usually start off. And then as the case progresses and if the parents are um, on a plan to reunify with their child, then they will increase those visits as time goes on and as the state deems it safe. And um, so it'll move up from like one time a week for an hour to maybe two hours once a week and then maybe um, two days, like two visits a week for two hours and it, it'll increase from there. Once in a great while, we have had situations where we get a phone call and like kind of really quickly um, visits increase and we don't really have an answer to why that happens. Um, sometimes there's like red tape that happens where a case is moving along slowly and for some reason the judge will order increased visits very, very quickly. That's not usually healthy for the child. Um, it usually throws them off. They're not used to, you know, they're just getting used to being with a foster family and visiting with mom or dad once or twice a week and then it increases quickly and there's usually a bad outcome from that, I will say. but. Um, so typically the, the department, when I say the department, I mean for Rhode Island, it's DCYF, Department of Child, Youth and Families, will slowly increase visit. As that happens, a caseworker, so their social worker or somebody from a visitation program will um, supervise the visit. And so depending on the situation, um, a social worker will be there to supervise the visit, make sure nothing's safe. Um, um, make sure nothing unsafe is happening. And they are, you know, 
recording kind of the interaction with the child and things like that. If a case is going towards reunification or if it's going towards um, TPR, which is termination of parental rights, often a visitation program will get involved. And a visitation program is a usually at a place, like at a um, specific building that has a clinician or somebody specifically trained to um, evaluate the parent-child relationship. So they're there not just making sure the child's safe, but their involvement is a little bit higher. They're really looking into, does this child have a bond with its with their parent? Um, you know, if the child's acting, acting up or, um, you know, scared or afraid or however the child is acting, they're really looking at how the parent is responding to that and they're evaluating them like on a deeper level. And that is so that they can then go back to the court with a report and say, you know, mom is doing great. She's really interacting with her child. She's responding appropriately with, with, for whatever the child's needs are during the visit or the opposite. You know, they, you know, are evaluating them and can see that mom doesn't know how to respond or she's getting flustered and um, doesn't know how to handle the situation or there's really no bond there. Maybe the child doesn't want to go with mom. Um, there's all sorts of different situations and I'm not a clinician so I can't speak into the specifics of how they evaluate them but um, we've been through this process many times with um, our foster children where they're in a visitation program and based on what that evaluator sees has a big impact on what the courts decide as far as reunification or um, if that child's going to be eventually up for adoption because the parents rights were terminated um, when you become a foster parent you have to recognize that um, visitation is going to be a big part of your life and like i said the minimum is going to be like one time a week for one hour and you may or may not be asked to transport the child to that visit. Um, we've done both. We have, like I'm doing now, um, our situation, um, we have a good relationship with birth mom and it works out in my schedule that I can transport him back and forth to his visit right now. Uh, there's other times where I can't do it and we have, the department has to provide transportation for us. Um, but there have been many times in the past where we have felt like it was an unsafe situation for us to transport the child to the visit. Sometimes the birth family, birth mom or dad, um, is not in a stable place where they're interacting with us in a safe manner. Um, they're still allowed to see their child and visit with them, but for whatever reason, they're not appropriate with the foster parents. And I, you know, um, they're in a very stressful situation, and I think some birth parents don't understand the role of a foster parent versus a social worker or um, a CPS worker or somebody involved in whether or not they get their child back. We have zero say in that. Um, of course, we can give our input and we can, it is our role to share with the courts, um, you know, how the child behaves after they come home from a visit or what they say in our home. We have to report all of that stuff, but we have no decision-making power. But unfortunately, we have had many instances where birth parents um, kind of take their anger out on us and think that we have some, we had some role in why their child was removed or anything like that. And I think the average person knows that foster parents have no, no say in any of that. And we are here just to care for their children. Um, so, like I said, we have had situations where we were transporting and then we were put in an unsafe situation with birth parents. So then we had to stop that and um, request that the child be picked up from our home transported to the visit and then returned so that we didn't have that interaction with the birth family. And um, so that's kind of a, a sad thing when that happens, but we have to keep ourselves safe and minimize any um, negative interactions for the child, especially. I mean, that's what I always think about is I don't want to put a child in a position where they're seeing their birth parent and then their foster parent um, not getting along or there being any kind of negative interaction. The state should be providing transportation for the child to and from their visit. If it doesn't fit with your schedule and it's um, too much of a strain, like you have been times where, you know, we have other children, so we can't, we're not free to 
go to three visits a week um, and hang around for an hour or two and and do all of that. So um, the state should be or the agency that you're with should be helping you navigate all of that and provide supports to get the child to and from their visit. So that's typically how a visit goes. I don't stay. I do not. Um, I'm not in charge of supervising the visit. Um, a social worker or um, in our state, we also have people that their job is to do visits. They're not their child social worker, but they're somebody who comes, does the transportation, stays at the visit, and um, and supervises. So um, we do not have to do that. So if that's something as a foster parent you were thinking would be difficult for you or awkward or scary, um, you do not have to be in that position. Um, and uh, uh, related to that, uh, a lot of times people wonder if we have to maintain a relationship with the birth parents. And again, that is a personal choice. If you want to, and it's safe to um, and appropriate to have a relationship with a birth family, then you know, you're know you always encouraged to do that because it's best for the child. Um, you wanna create a sense of care and community and love for the child where they're seeing all these adults in their life that love them and are willing to get along and work you know, for their benefit. Um, but ultimately, if you don't feel that it's safe, you don't feel that it's appropriate, you know, for any reason at all, you do not want to have a relationship with a birth family, you do not have to do that. That is not something you're required to do. Um, your role is specifically for the child. So I think that is the main question we usually get is, do I have to supervise? Do I have to transport? How often are visits? And what does a visit look like? So, you know, a lot of times it's at a um, park if it's the weather's nice or like McDonald's or something like that. That's usually where it happens. It's at a, um, a public place. It's not happening in the child's birth family's home. That can happen if reunification is very near and then they will have visits in the home supervised and then like an overnight or something like that. But that's further down the line. Uh, the typical visit happens in a public place with a supervised person there, a supervisor there. So that answers that question about visits. Sorry, I had to cut us off quickly there at the end of that discussion about visitation. Daniel's visit was time was over, so I had to head over and pick him up. And um, so we're already back home. But I just wanted to remind you guys, feel free to leave any questions down in the comment section below. We would love to know what you're curious about. What kinds of things um, do you want to know when it comes to foster care? So we're happy to answer any of those. And like I said, um, share our videos with somebody that you think might benefit from them. Whether or not you want to be a foster parent or not, this information, um, we'd really love it to get out to the right people who um, are curious and want to know more about foster care. So give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.